One aspect of multi-object tracking, which is highly non-trivial, is how to evaluate performance of our algorithms. We are normally particularly interested in comparing how well different algorithms estimate the set of objects. One reason that this comparison is complicated is that the performance depends on various aspects, such as how often we fail to detect the different objects and how accurately we estimate their state vectors. To be able to compare the performance of different algorithms, we need to capture all the aspects in a single number. And we use metrics on sets to do this. At the end of every recursion, our multi-object tracking algorithms normally output an estimate x hat k of the true set of objects xk. Our objective is to figure out how to evaluate how accurate the estimate x hat k is. One reason that we care about this is to figure out which algorithm that produces the best estimates. Another way to express this is that we want to know how close x hat k is to xk. It is important to note that both x hat k and xk are sets. For instance, in the figure to the right, we have a set of two objects represented by the blue circles. And our estimator tells us that there are three objects, as indicated by the three red stars. Our task is to figure out how close the set of red stars is to the set of blue circles. As you can understand, it is a bit more involved to measure distances between sets than between vectors, since sets are invariant to order, and since the number of elements in the sets may vary. Our approach to this is to look for metrics between sets that are suitable for evaluating multi-object tracking algorithms. The development of performance metrics is somewhat subjective, but you arguably want a metric that penalizes localization errors for the detected objects, as well as the number of false and missed objects. For instance, in the example to the right, we have classified the two red stars in the bottom right corner as false object estimates, since there are no objects near those estimates. Similarly, the object in the upper half of the figure is considered missed since there are no estimates in the vicinity of that object. Finally, one object is considered properly detected or localized since there is a corresponding estimate next to it. What we argue is that the distance between the sets should increase if you increase the number of false or missed objects, and it should increase if the distance between the properly detected objects and their estimates increase. In this course, we use the Generalized Optimal Sub-Pattern Assignment Metric, or GOSPA for short. There are other metrics that one can use for multi-object tracking, but we prefer GOSPA for various reasons. A rough description of GOSPA is that it is the sum of the localization error and c over 2 times the number of missed and false objects, where c is a design variable. In the figure, there are three false and missed objects in total. GOSPA would therefore be the distance between the properly detected object and its estimate, plus c over 2 times 3. As I've already mentioned, GOSPA is one example of a metric that one can use to evaluate multi-object tracking performance. All metrics satisfy four different properties that make them particularly suitable for evaluating performance. They are non-negative, they are only zero for identical elements, and they are symmetric. Importantly, they also satisfy the triangle inequality, without which a performance measure may demonstrate very undesirable properties. For vectors in a Euclidean space, we often use the LP norm to define metrics. The parameter p actually also appears in GOSPA in a very similar fashion. In the examples that we consider below, we assume that the Euclidean distance is used to measure the localization error between properly detected objects and their corresponding estimates. As you can see, the Euclidean distance is also the L2 norm of the difference between the two vectors. Let us look at how GOSPA is computed. The first step is to find the optimal assignment between the two sets. The optimal assignment is a set of pairs of indices. 
For instance, the way we have indexed the object states and the estimates in the figure to the right, the only assignment that appears in the optimal assignment is the pair 1,3. Pairs are left unassigned if the distance between the points is larger than c. For instance, the reason that, say, 2,1 is not included in the set of assignments is that the Euclidean distance between these points is larger than c, which in this case is 40. We refer to unassigned elements as false objects if they belong to x hat and missed objects if they belong to x. The cost for assigned pairs is the distance between the two assigned vectors. We use the Euclidean distance here, but you can use another metric if you want. We previously referred to this as the localization error. Finally, the cost for unassigned elements is c over 2. In the example to the right, the Euclidean distance between x1 and x hat 3 is 15. And apart from that, we have three missed and false objects in total. Gospa is therefore 15 plus 3 times c over 2, which is 75. Gospa has another free parameter alpha. We always use alpha equal 2, since it ensures that Gospa has the properties described above. For other values of alpha, we still penalize cardinality mismatches, but we do not explicitly penalize missed and false objects, which is arguably what we want to do. The value alpha equal 1 is also important, since it enables us to understand the relation to OSPA, which is a commonly used metric for multi-object tracking. When alpha is equal to 2, GOSPA still has the parameters C and P, where P is usually either 1 or 2, and C over 2 is the cost for every missed or false object. Now, given P and C, we can write GOSPA between the two sets, boldface x and boldface x hat, as follows. We note that when P is equal to 1, this is a minimization over the set of assignment sets of the sum over the localization cost for all pairs in gamma plus c over 2 times the following expression, which is the number of missed plus the number of false objects. For instance, in our example, the difference between the cardinalities of x and gamma is 2 minus 1, which is 1. Similarly, the difference between the cardinalities of y and gamma is 3 minus 1, which is 2. Clearly, 1 and 2 are the number of missed and false objects in this example. To understand why the difference between the cardinalities of x and gamma is the number of missed objects, we note that gamma is the number of properly detected objects, and all objects that are not properly detected are missed. We present these equations in order to help you make sense of this metric. To actually implement the minimization over gamma, we express the metric on a slightly different form that enables us to use efficient assignment algorithms, such as the Hungarian or the auction algorithm.